Welcome to the Fuel Podcast, where we explore the foundations under extraordinary lives. The Fuel Podcast is sponsored by the Christopher Schwartz team at First Choice Mortgage Advisors. NMLS ID 106583. If you're looking to purchase or refinance your mortgage, make the Christopher Schwartz team at First Choice Mortgage your first choice. And now, here is your host, Chris Schwartz. What's up, everybody? It's Chris Schwartz, your host of Fuel, and I am here today with our guest, Bill McCafferty. Bill, how are you, man? Doing great, Chris. Glad you uh, invited me on. Looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Bill comes to us uh, from People's Choice Mortgage. People's to Mortgage Relief, too. People's Mortgage Relief, too. It's a tongue twister, but I got it. People's <laughs> Mortgage Relief, too. And your role there right now is an asset manager, right? That is correct. I'm an asset manager. And uh, what People's Mortgage Relief, too, does, uh, we manage uh, non-performing uh, second mortgages. And we also manage uh, non-performing first mortgages. Uh, for different note investors uh, throughout the country. So, you know, the title that I use is Asset Manager. It's kind of a fancy title and, uh, you know, right, looks, you looks professional. <laughs> nice. Got to have the fancy title. So, <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks again f- for joining us today. And, uh, you know, most importantly, Bill's also husband and father to two I guess not so little ones, right? We we're just talking talking about that. <laughs> it happens quick, man. Yep, I got uh, I have a son who's sixteen, and I have a daughter who's fourteen. Uh, I've been married twenty years, and you know that's what it's all about at the end of the day, right there. Yeah, nice. And uh, you know, part of part of what we do, and really what we do here on Fuel, is to talk about you know with people that kind of you know what their fuel is and what drives them. And you and I were just talking a little bit before this. And one of the, the awesome things about, you know, working for yourself and being, a, you know, kind of marching to the beat of your own drum, so to speak, is, you know, you get to drive, you would just said, hey, you know, I drive my, my daughter to the bus stop in, uh, you know, even though she can, she could get there, you, you get to do that. And that's, you know, one of the awesome things that you, in life when you're self-employed, right? <laughs> nah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's one of the best things about being an entrepreneur, working for yourself, you know, it's not all uh, sunshine, but, uh, you know, the best things is being around your loved ones. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, one, one of the things I enjoy most. I mean, we, we work, you know, a lot of hours, a lot of goofy hours sometimes. Um, but there's also that flexibility uh, where you can do things like that. So, um, you know, we'll just dive right into it, man. And, and, you know, we're already kind of talking a little bit, I'm sure, what your fuel is. You know, part of your, your fuel would be your family and your kids and everything. So, uh, you and I go back a little bit, uh, you know, so we have some history, haven't seen each other in, in quite some time, but I've been following along with what you're doing, and I just wanted to have you on here, man, you, you're you're putting out good stuff, I know you got a lot going on in your business, you got the YouTube channel, the course, all kinds of things going on, so um, we're going to put all that aside, though, and we're going to dig into, we're going to dig into Bill and, and who you are and, and what makes you tick, man, you ready? <laughs> Absolutely, man. All right, cool, man, so I'm just going to throw it out there, man, what's, what's your fuel? What's what's something that you know? Really, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's what we just talked about. Um, yeah, I have a wife, uh, twenty years of marriage, uh, two kids, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about them. Um, I do everything that I need to do um, to take care of them. You know, every day you get up, you feel sorry for yourself. You just need to remind yourself what your why is, and uh, why you're doing this. You know, there's definitely the the fear factor of failing. There's the fear factor of this thing not working. There's the fear factor of not being able to take care of your family. There's the fear factor of, you know, going back to a nine to five job, which I did for over 15 years. So it's all that fear that you just turn into fuel every day. And any day that you get up and you feel sorry for yourself or you don't want to do it, you remember your why and you take all those fears and it's what fuels you. Um, you know, clearly as an entrepreneur, you like all the opportunity, um, you like all the challenges that, that come about it every day. But at the end of the day, it's the fuel is your why, right? right? You know, what are you doing this for? How are you going to do it? And why are you doing it? Yeah. And what we just talked about, you know, I got a 16 and a 14 year old. I want them to have a decent life. 
I want them to have nice things. You know, I want them to understand what goes on to get those nice things. Sure. And, uh, but that's, you know, that's what it's about right there, man. Yeah. And that's, you know, for, for, I also, you know, I have two little girls, a wife, uh, it definitely, you know, becomes your fuel as, as you, you know, there's all kinds of things that we talk about fuel and, you know, I kind of, in uh, some episodes that I've done before, talk about, you know, fuel in the early stages and, and kind of before you get to that phase, like there's all these things that happen in life that you just, you know, so you just kind of store them up as like little, little nuggets. And that, you know, is what drives you. It's, it's what makes you who you are. And, you know, you just kind of talked about, you know, 15 years uh, in, you know, the nine to five, right? Uh, so what was that like, dude? What was, what did you, what did you get out of that? What did you do? What, like, yeah, what, what was that transition like? Nah, absolutely. I mean, I worked at a school, uh, took care of athletic facilities for, uh, over 15 years, you know, great job. You know, I would never change it in the world. You know, it kind of laid down who Bill McCafferty was. Um, you know, I learned how to deal with, uh, and interact with, you know, kids that were in, you know, high school level all the way up to, you know, people in their sixties, everybody in between. Um, hmm. it laid the foundation for who I was, but it also fueled me to realize, you know, it was kind of, you know, when I met you back, I think we met back in 2007, um, at a local real estate event down in Delaware County. Yep. Um, you know, about two years before that, it, you know, I hit a wall in life. Like if this is all life was about, you know, I was fooled by everybody, you know, not that I failed, but you know, working 50 hours a week, you know, not really being home. You know, the wife was working as a school teacher 50 hours a week, and we're giving everybody else all our energy. And when we get home, we got no energy for the kids. We have no energy for each other. And uh, it just started digging and digging inside me. And I knew I had to figure something out. And that's when I started going to a lot of local real estate groups. You know, like a lot of people, I saw one of those late night infomercials about right. real estate, buying real estate with no money down. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> and I just wanted they're to great, f- aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're great. You know what I mean? And, you know, we laugh about it, but it's definitely what what sparked the interest. Yeah. And it's what got me out trying to figure it out, uh, finding the right people, finding out people that were actually, you know, making money and, you know, finding the people that were really doing real estate full time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as I started going down that, that wormhole, that rabbit hole of real estate and really starting to meet real people that were doing it, um, it's kind of what fueled everything. Yeah. Nice. And, and I remember you had, at that time, you had a couple of rental properties and you were going through it, right? They weren't, it wasn't the dream. It wasn't that TV infomercial. I remember you had, <laughs> you were having some challenges with, with some of your rentals and, and different things at that time. And absolutely. I mean, at one time I, I owned 15 properties. Um, I only own one rental and, uh, my primary residence right now. Um, yeah, I got caught up in the height of the market and the real estate market crash. Yep. Uh, did all kinds of stuff, you know, just like everything I do in life. I don't go at it slow. I go full tilt, all in, all in all the time. Yeah. You know, um, you know, that's just who I am. It's what I'm about. So it's like you said, I mean, I started buying rentals, got involved in some rehabs, got involved in some subdivision stuff, bought some houses down in, uh, Texas that ended up oh, getting hit I by a hurricane, that. like a lot of crazy stuff. So, you know, my first five years at this thing, you know, there's a lot of failure, you know, there was a lot of failures, right. there's a lot of mistakes you know, met some of the wrong people, Yep. but it's all what laid the foundation and, you know, allowed me to figure it out and gave me the fuel to, you know, kind of land where I'm at today. Yeah. And that's, you know, I always hear, um, you know, one of, one of the guys I'm connected with, uh, John Dempsey, he, he's, he's a coach and he, he does this thing on Fridays you know, called fail forward. And I love the concept of that, right? Because you just, I mean, you know, maybe if you're like, you know, one in, I don't know, a million, you just kind of jump into business and just start rolling and, and don't get your ass kicked. Right. But, <laughs> but for most of us, you know, it's, it's a lot of, um, you know, you know, it's just a school, of, school of hard knocks, right? Like it just, you get, you get kicked around, you learn some things, you, you deal with some good people, you deal with some not so good people and, and you just learn from it and you develop. And then you come to this point where, uh, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough and, and you, you know, work with the right people and, and 
made the right decisions, you are, and the market has been cooperative. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of factors. And, and, lot of and factors. Mother Nature has been cooperative and, you know, doesn't, doesn't wipe your, your, your real estate portfolio out. Then you can look to people and, you know, you're quote unquote successful, right? And, and it's amazing how, like, everybody just sees and wants to gravitate towards you and ask questions like, Hey Bill, you know how do I get involved in, in you know doing not working with non-performing second mortgages and and just like you can just jump in and uh, like automatically you just figure it out and you know people don't appreciate I don't think that the struggle that went into you know <laughs> you being able to coach someone teach a course and put this content out there because there's so much that goes into into it as an entrepreneur where you just fail and it just doesn't work right so yeah, i mean absolutely i mean i always say there's you know there's two true ways to success through mentors and through mistakes yeah and we all know what mentors do and we all have them at some level some degree we have numerous ones um, but mistakes i mean you know that's what it's about you're going to make mistakes you need to learn from them and hey you're going to make the same mistake a few times sometimes but you just need to learn from it Yep. You need to dig deep and figure it out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely the truth. You know, it's what you said. You know, I don't know many people that have built successful businesses or are successful entrepreneurs and have never failed. Yeah, it's and just, it, you yeah, know, very rare. And know, if they're, sure they're out there, yeah. <laughs> go for you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm not too sure, but, yep, good for you. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. Um, so, yeah, and, and, you know, that's what – what inspired me to come up with this this podcast fuel because i love hearing people's stories I love, I love meeting with people and on the surface i talk about this a lot here is you know by the time you get to fuel right by the time we are able to sit here and do this and people actually care to listen to us we're doing okay right like we've we've done some some things to put ourselves here and uh you know it, it's it's great so i get to sit around people who most people look at and just say oh there's bill he's killing it he he's, does these non-performing seconds he's making all his money he's, he's uh, living the dream and and so many people that i get to sit with that people just view them as oh there's that successful real estate agent there's that successful so-and-so and like that's all they associate them with and i love to hear the story behind that and that's that's my fuel like that's why i started this because dude, the stories are where it's at like that's what Absolutely. that's what really you know excites me and i i want to share that with people so that when they're listening or, or watching this you know on the website they can think oh wow it doesn't just happen or you know i mean most people can't get that I, I hope right you don't expect to start a business and just be you know successful overnight but to really hear those stories and maybe somebody picks up on a little nugget, oh, that happened to me. You know what? I'm just going to keep pushing forward. And that's really what it's about is that, you know, if we can help, you know, through every episode and, and through through this platform, you know, just, just one person is listening to this and says, you know what, man, I'm having a, having a rough time in my business or in my marriage or in my, you know, relationship with my kids, anything. And just, just realize that, you, man, you just got to, you know, plow forward, man. Tomorrow's another day. Mm. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, I mean, I went to college. I graduated with a sociology criminal justice degree. Yeah. You know, the school that I was at taking care of athletic fields was for court committed kids. Okay. So, you know, I'm in this thing for, you know, well over 15 years before I shifted gears Yeah. and try to figure this thing out. So, you know, taking care of athletic fields to managing, you know, non-performing mortgage notes nationwide. It's a, Right. That's yeah. a big change. There's a big <laughs> gap there. You know, there was a lot of soul searching. There was a lot of, yeah. you know, what you just talked about, putting yourself around the right people and, you know, trying to figure this thing out. Yeah. Nothing that, easy about it. Yeah. And that's, that's so key, man. Just putting yourself around the right people. I mean, for anybody listening, if you want to, to level up your game and you, you want to, you know, just take some of the struggle out of the process, just find the right people. Because there are people that are doing what you want to do, that you're passionate about, that will be willing to share their experience, coach you, guide you along the way. And, 
man, it will save you a lot of time, money, and a lot of pain. Um. <laughs> man, you know, it's and it's one of the toughest things is that true soul searching because some of the, you know, some of the negative influencers are right around you, your family, people yeah. that you grew up with, people that you associate with. And it's, you know, it's, hard it, to it's real tough. I disassociate mean, it, with yeah, you know, some of those people, especially yeah, when they're family, know, right? Yeah, and, and you may still be friendly with them or they may still be your family. But at the end of the day, they're not bringing any value. They're not adding anything to your life yep. to put you to where you need to go. It's, uh, I always say, you know, you really do some true soul searching as an entrepreneur yeah. um, to put yourself around the right people. Yeah. And, and you know, once you do that, you know, if it, it just, it, it's amazing. And been one of the biggest game changers in my life is just putting myself around the right people, uh, you know, that just, you know, help you out, pick you up when you fall down and are just there to, you know, really kick in the ass sometimes when you, when you need it. Um, because it's, it's not all, you know, I mean, we all have people in our lives that, you know, like no matter what you could do, right. Like mom, dad, whatever. It's like, Oh yeah, you know, great job. You know, you, you could, you, you know, be doing nothing. And it's like, you know, you always have those supporters, whoever they are. Um, you know, but sometimes you need some tough love, right? Somebody that's going to tell you, dude, come on, man. Like, get, let's go, let's go. And, um, you know, that's, I mean, as you, as you made that shift from, you know, the nine to five taking care of athletic fields to, you know, take, taking on this asset manager role. I mean, how did you handle that? Like fear. And especially at that time when you made the transition, you had real little kids, right? Yeah. I mean, it was a big change. I mean, you know, it all started on the home front with the wife, you know, the wife being very supportive, always being behind me. Cause early on, like we talked about, it wasn't pretty a lot of times. I right. mean, there was times, you know, I came home continuously. Well, this is what happened. This is what happened. And it wasn't all good stuff. Right. Um, but it was the support. Um, she saw the determination. Um, and, you know, as we talk about it at my house, it, you know, it's, we're a team. It's a team effort. Yeah. You know, the kids actually joke around with the wife a little bit now about her not working. Yeah. And, you know, busting chops a little bit. But they had no idea that, you know, she worked for 18 years and, you know, we yeah. did this thing as a team to put everybody in a good spot. Yep. And now she's home with the kids and she's allowing me to do everything that I need to do. So there's no baggage behind me and I can fully concentrate on the business. I can do these podcasts. Yeah. I can go to meetings at night. I can travel on the weekends. You know, it's not frowned upon. Um, yeah. And if somebody's working 50 hours a week, you know, might not get that support. Yeah. No, it's, and that's, you know, that's, that's one of the other, I mean, that had to be a huge, uh, you know, win for, for you guys as a team, right. To be able to, you know, not only leave your nine to five, but you know, now you're in a position where the income that you're generating from this business has allowed your wife to, to leave her nine to five and really focus on the most important thing, right. Making sure that the family's taken care of. I mean, I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's, you know, talking about what fuels you. I mean, that's, yeah, that's fuel every day. I mean, you know, she was working 50 hours a week at a school. She'd come home depleted dealing with the administration, dealing with the kids, the parents, yeah. and my kids weren't getting that effort. And I'm yeah. just like, you know, she's giving other people 50 hours a week effort. And, you know, it wasn't, she didn't want to, she was just depleted when she got home. She was tired. She was frustrated. Yeah. I and, mean, uh, you know, I, you know, I fed off that for years that I need to make this happen. Yeah. And uh, absolutely, I take a lot of pride in that, and I feed off that every day right now. I mean, that's part of the fuel, you know, part of the fear. I don't want her to go back to work. Yeah. I don't want this thing to fail. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm you know, in, a, in a similar position. You know, my uh, my wife was able to, to step away from, from her full-time career, um, you know, with the big corporate company. You know, it was, you know, great job, but it was it was really demanding. Uh, long hours, you know, she was, you know, a revenue accountant for, for a global company. And, you know, once it was quarter end, month end, you know, whatever it was, I mean, she was just, you know, to get, to get those numbers closed out, man, it was like 12, 13, you know, 15 hour days. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then you throw in me being an entrepreneur. I mean, there's no, there's no end to my day, right? It's not nine to five and I can come home and, and support her and, and take care of the family. I mean, I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting email. I'm trying to manage, you know, basically 
uh, you know, 24 seven business. I mean, it's crazy. Um, so, you know, we made a decision, uh, once we went out and, and started the company to say, Hey, you know what, <clears throat> why don't you just do the books for the company? You know, you can, you can work from home. You can do these, you know, these flexible hours and it, it's really low key compared to what she had. And it's been a game changer for our family. And it's, it is something that, that, you know, that I take pride in and that she takes pride in being able to, um, you know, support me on the back end and, and make sure everything's taken care of. And like, I couldn't do what I do with, without that. It's oh, just, nah. and it's, I'm, sh- <laughs> you know, I'm not speaking for you, but I'm speaking for myself and I'm sure you'll probably just chuckle and laugh too. We're not easy to deal with. Yeah, no, no yeah, <laughs> we're no. not easy, man. Like, no, I mean, you know, they love us and they're there for support, but we're not easy. You yeah, know? Dude. there's days that are tough, man. And, you uh, yep. know, there's no one better to go talk to than, you know. Yeah. You yeah. Know, no, significant sometimes other. I feel bad for myself. I'm yeah, like, absolutely. I wish I could just not talk about no, this. Absolutely. And it's, you know, from my end, you know, my office is in my house and, you know, some of the toughest things, one of the toughest thing to do is to separate that. Keep the business out of the house. As much yep. as it's, you know, the business that takes care of the whole family. Yeah. You got to try to leave some of that stuff out. Yeah. And no, for uh, sure. It's a balance. Yep. So, well, cool, man. Dude, it's, a, it's you got a lot going on. And, and how much just, just uh, right now are you managing? What do you, got, what do you guys have under management? Uh, for, um, for the clients, I manage about, uh, right now, it's around 115 non-performing loans. 115 non-performing yeah, loans. Yeah, and they're throughout the country. Okay. Uh, majority of them are non-performing seconds, but there are some non-performing first in there. Gotcha. Okay. It's about a little over 25 clients that own those 115 non-performing loans. Okay. Nice. So you're really, and I guess that comes part of into that sociology degree, right? You got to, you deal with a lot of different dynamics and you got to be able to manage and, and, and have some empathy, right? You're, you're dealing with people's nah. people's lives. Like so. I said, I wouldn't change anything. I think where I'm at today, everything that I encountered and dealt with all laid apart in the, you know, the Indeed. success at this thing. Nice. That's awesome, man. Well, Bill, it's so great to have you here and just, just hear your story. It's such an inspiration. And, um, you know, we're, now we're going to hit you with the fun part of the interview, which is our rapid fire. Do it up. And we got three questions for you. Um, and it goes like this. And before I start rapid fire, I always throw the disclaimer out there. We know you're going to pick your friends, your family, your loved ones. So we're not going to go there okay. with them. So you're stuck on an island. And we're going to ask you three questions. You're not getting off the island. There's no chance. First question, outside of your friends, family, loved ones, of course, the people we'd bring. Who would you bring with you? Someone that's had some influence in your life. Uh, somebody that make you laugh, like anybody, it doesn't matter. Someone's I'm bringing the lead singer of a rock group, Fish, Trey Anastasio. Nice, I think. I think we've had that before. I think I think someone else is bringing uh, bringing him as well. So there you go. So you're just gonna jam out on the island. I like it. That's it. You know, not to get sidetracked, but you know, there's another thing that fuels me. I've seen 192 fish shows over the last <laughs> 26 years, dude. That's so, awesome. And that, and. Uh, Tell me, like, from where to where? Like, uh, I've seen them in over 30 states, and I've only saw them out of the country once. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I've been seeing them probably about 10 times a year for the last 26 years, and, nice. you know, that they're, not a cheap ha- they're not a cheap hobby, so that fuels me, too. Yeah, right? It's not <laughs> not quite the old, uh, you know, hippie days where it's, you know, cheap and, you know, just jump in the van and go. It's uh, a little more sophisticated and expensive these days. And uh, I'm sure being an entrepreneur helps with that flexibility and, and uh, financing. Nah, and there's a whole business side to, to the band, too. That's pretty cool. So I think a guy like that would be just great to hang out with, pick his brain, you know, hear all his stories. Nice. That's so, awesome. That's my guy. All right. And then secondly, um, what book? If you, if you had to bring a book, what's a book that's, that you'd like to share with our listeners that's had some influence for you? Uh, compound Effect. Compound effect. Darren Hardy. Darren right. Hardy. Okay. Great book, man. Yeah. I think that's what it's all about, the compound effect. Yep. Love it. So, all right. And then last question is food. Guilty pleasure, food you have to have. What are you bringing? I'm a cheese guy, man. Oh, yeah? I yeah. love cheese, man. All right. All that's right. probably why I'm not the, the slimmest guy. I, okay. I love, you know, I'm a cheese guy, man. All right. Cheese makes everything better. Cheese makes, all right, dude. You know, I mean, we're taping this here at the 320 Market Cafe and Media. <laughs> yeah. we'll have to, and you haven't been here, so we'll have to, there, there's plenty out there in that, yeah, in that case. So. I, I eyed it up when I came in. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to send you out here with some. Um, awesome, man. I, I really, you know, love sitting down with you. 
Um, if we, if people uh, want to learn more, what we're trying to do here in 2020 with fuel is we're trying to give people more value out of this because um, we sit down with some amazing people that could really, you know, help change people's lives. So um, I'm going to ask if, if um, you know, you have anything that you can offer our listeners that might want to, you know, pick your brain, you know, have an interest in what it looks like to be an asset manager for non-performing second mortgages. Absolutely. Um, I have multiple businesses, multiple companies. There's a lot of things going on, but I think something that, you know, will add value is um, there's a free webinar that I have out there right now. Okay. Um, kind of, kind of goes over the business a little bit. Okay. Um, it dips into it a little bit. I mean, you know, I could talk about this business for hours and hours. Sure. So yeah. The webinar is an hour. Um, it's uh, www.notefortunes. Okay. So notefortunes.com. All right. And they, um, can, they can go on. They can sign up uh, for a free webinar. They can watch it. Okay. At the end of the webinar, um, I supply them with a free no business report. Okay. It's got a lot of cool stuff on it. And they can set up a, a call with me. Awesome. Um, they can, you know, that free call, they can set up and they can ask me anything. We can talk about anything. Okay, nice. So, so I think that would be beneficial for the uh, for the audience and, you know, your network. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate that. And, and you know, definitely check that out, guys, because what it is, as Bill said in the, uh, earlier, you know, he had 15 rental properties. He had, you know, the actual sticks and bricks on the real estate side. And, you know, managing that asset, well, I guess as a second mortgage holder, you, you still kind of have some interest in the sticks and bricks. But, um, you know, not collecting, you know, checks and managing rental properties, but being involved in real estate, um, you know, you see all these different ways to get involved and these late night infomercials that we talked about, about how to buy and sell real estate. Um, the note world is a totally different way to get involved and um, not have to deal with that, quote unquote, being a landlord um, so definitely check that out. It's an awesome resource, really interesting side of the real estate business and, uh, you know, could be a game changer for you. So, um, where else can we find you? Um, if, if people want to connect, I know you got the YouTube channel now, a couple other things, um, where you're, you're throwing yeah, some absolutely. stuff Absolutely. Um, you know, big social media guy. Um, you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Bill McCafferty, uh, McCafferty's M C C A F F E R T Y. Um, you know, I have a personal page on Facebook. I have a business page on Facebook, Bill McCafferty. Um, I have a business page uh, on Facebook, Note Fortunes. Okay. Uh, Bill McCafferty's YouTube channel, putting out a lot of free content. Nice. Um, I think people would enjoy. All right, nice. And this is the Bill McCafferty. I know there might be other ones, but look for the beard. That's right? it, man. It's the beard. No mustache, the beard. <laughs> um, awesome. All right, well, make sure you guys connect with Bill. Um, yeah, thanks so much for, for coming on again. And for those of you listening, I hope you got something out of this. Um, please share it with your friends, family, tag anybody you think that this could uh, have an impact with and give us a five star rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And on that note, no pun intended, Bill, we're out. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep.